Rich Michelson is well known for his fine arts gallery in Northampton, but he's becoming equally famous as an author of unique books aimed at young readers. We sat down recently to discuss Rich's latest work, The Survival and Revival of Hebrew, The Language of Angels. What the story is about uh, is the reinvention of the Hebrew language. And what a lot of people don't realize, especially children, is that language is our living, growing organisms. Uh, you know, we tend to think in school that um, vocabulary was, you know, for, with us forever, passed down from on high. But languages evolve just as people do. And um, Hebrew had stopped being used as a daily language over 2,000 years ago, uh, about the time of the Maccabees, 200 BCE. And um, while it was still used in prayers and in the temples, it wasn't used day to day. Yeah. And, uh, and basically, the, uh, there was nothing in the language, uh, a word for anything that had developed in over 2,000 years. And when my uh, hero of the book, a real figure named Eliezer ben Yehuda, um, wanted to bring that language back into use, and he, um, he had to make up words for everything. You know, in the Bible, they didn't have ice cream. They didn't have bicycles. Uh, no cell phones. He didn't, he didn't work on the word for cell phone. Um, but, um, you know, he, uh, he basically came up with that title, uh, saying that, you know, uh, Hebrew was the language that the angels spoke, um, was his way of trying to get... Uh, people to uh, start using it again. And most people didn't want to use it. I mean, even uh, Jews um, felt that at that point that it was a holy language. It shouldn't be used in day-to-day -day speech. Uh, nobody really thought that this would ever happen. You know, it's, uh, imagine bringing Latin back today and deciding that everybody in Massachusetts is going to speak Latin uh, and then seeing in a lifetime it happening. And Eliezer did see his dream come true. Amazing. It really is amazing. Let, let's set it in context <clears throat> a little bit. And what, a, what a great description you've given. We're talking 1885 in Jerusalem, Palestine at that Palestine time. At this that is time. obviously pre-Israel. This is the time, and correct me, these folks would have been living, Jews living under Muslim rule, the Ottoman Turks, I think. Turks, right? Yes, okay. exactly. So an interesting time for Jews, and, and some Jews were coming back to their native, their, their homeland even then. Right. It, it was the beginning of the Zionist movement, mm -hmm. certainly, uh, and Eliezer was, felt that in order to have a homeland, um, Jews should speak the same language. There were many Jews still in, uh, you know, he con Eliezer considered himself a Jerusalemite. Um, mm -hmm. There was no sense of, at the time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, beyond that. But, uh, but there were many Jews who had lived there forever or for thousands of years, mm -hmm. um, but also many Turks, uh, Russians. It was really a cosmopolitan mm -hmm. city mm -hmm. and certainly a large population of Arabs. Mm -hmm. And um, in general, the Arabs welcomed Eliezer and his experiment at the time. It is the story of Eliezer and his son Ben Zion, who, who ends up almost kind of a little bit of a, a pariah or an outcast among his friends and his schoolmates because of his father's quest to, to you know, reinvent Hebrew. Had I been alive in that time, I probably would have wanted uh, Eliezer uh, arrested for child abuse. Um, he wanted his son to be the first child in over 2,000 years to grow up with Hebrew as his first language and speaking only Hebrew. And because um, there were no other native Hebrew speakers speaking in day-to-day -day language, his son was really isolated. Uh, he did not allow other languages to be spoken in his home. He felt that, um, that in order for Ben Zion to grow up speaking Hebrew, it's had to be what he heard daily. Uh, and so uh, he didn't have much of a social life. And uh, he learned to speak very late. Uh, he was already closing in five. Uh, most of the people thought, uh, most of the neighbors thought it was a cruel thing. Um, and in fact, uh, Eliezer would cover his son's ears even if animals were, were barking and mooing. Um, and 
you know, fortunately, I, in hindsight, um, I know that Ben Zion did grow up to be a fairly normal person interested in um, languages himself. It seems to be a theme in, in a number of your books. Young Ben Zion is that character that, that does feel left out, does feel different. That's a theme with you to, to it seems, to, to, to go I, to children with that. Yeah, I think that, um, I think that many children, uh, many adults, um, you know, we, we all know better intellectually, but we all grow up feeling a little bit the outsider. Um, and uh, I want my books to teach kids that, um, that that's a common occurrence, that, you know, oftentimes the outsider is the one who does succeed in life, and that we're all outsiders in some ways. Uh, my last book, of course, about Leonard Nimoy and his character Spock, um, became such a popular character because so many people identified with him as an outsider not fitting in. And Ben Zion and his father, Elias, did not fit into the common culture. They wanted to do th things differently. Well, Rich Michelson, the book is The Language of Angels. It is a fascinating read, and not just for young readers. It's a story really everybody should know. Thank well, you for thank the you story. Thank you so much, uh, and I appreciate it.